What a lovely morning, thought Thomas, looking out of Tibna's sheds. And off he went. <laughs> Thomas was staring right at the ground. Where has the turntable gone? The turntable connected all the sheds together, so only one piece of track was needed to get to them. But today, it wasn't there. What's all the noise? said James. What have you done with the turntable, Thomas? said Gordon. How are we going to work today? said Henry. Are you all right, Thomas? said Percy. Sir Topham had arrived. I'm not quite sure what's happened, he said, but I'll get a new turntable put in straight away. <laughs> On the other side of town, laughter could be heard. Tom Moss the prank engine. I think it might have been you. It didn't take the engineers long to fit a new turntable and Thomas was the first engine to use it. It was good to get out on the track again and Thomas was enjoying the journey. Then he had a bit of luck. He heard Tom Moss laughing and immediately knew that it was him who took the turntable. I need a plan, he thought. Yes, I know. Off he went to meet Percy and James and he told them his plan. A little later on, he met Percy near Tom's tunnel. Tell the other engines to meet me by the signals at the garden shop, Thomas told Percy quite loud, in one hour's time. They left, but Thomas doubled back. He saw Tom Moss leave his tunnel. The plan was working. Tom went towards the garden shop and changed all the signals to red. Then he hid. Meanwhile, with Tom on the other side of town and out of his tunnel, Percy and James were very busy bringing large bricks backwards and forwards. they completely bricked up the back of the tunnel. They also hid a pile of bricks behind the trees near the front of the tunnel. Thomas went to the garden shop. The signals were red, so he waited. And waited and waited. <laughs> Having caught Thomas, Tom Moss crept away. <laughs> Thomas saw this and knew the light wasn't really red and followed. Tom, pleased with his work, reversed into his tunnel. Percy and James sprung into action and bricked up the front of the tunnel. Thomas arrived. Did it work? he said. Yes, said Percy. He's now trapped and won't ever get out. But as they were celebrating, Tom Moss burst through the wall and headed for the forest. After him, Percy, said Thomas. But Percy didn't move quick enough and Thomas knocked him over and came off the track himself. 
Oh dear. Tom Moss got away again. Tom Moss the prank engine seems to have got a new friend. It's Janjar. I wonder what they are up to at the volcano in the forest. Meanwhile, the Lion Guard team were on the lookout for an old dinosaur egg that they'd been told would give them clues as to their ancestors. The egg is around here somewhere, I know, said Kion. I'll have a look, said Ono. And he flew off. Yes, there's the egg. He told the others that Janjar had got it, and it's big and on top of the volcano. How are we going to get it? said Kion. At that moment, Thomas came along. Can I help you? said Thomas. Yes, please, said Kion, and they thought of a plan. Thomas took Kion close to the volcano. Ono flew over the volcano and tried to land on a branch. The branch gave way, but the disturbance knocked the egg down. Thomas and Kion grabbed the egg and left quickly. Janjar and Tom Moss couldn't believe it. This doesn't look like a dinosaur egg, said Kyle. But let's open it anyway. It was a Zootropolis egg with a rubber inside. I wonder if Janjar has another egg, said Fuli. Ono went for another look. Yes, they do, said Ono. The egg's halfway up the volcano. This one's mine, said Fuli, and she got into Thomas. When Thomas and Fooley arrived, they saw Janjar and Tom Moss in the dungeon. Thomas reversed into the siding. Fooley jumped up to the egg and pressed a lever to make the egg fall into Thomas's truck. With Fooley aboard as well, Thomas sped off. No, we've lost another egg, said Janjar. Oh dear, said Fooley, I hope I'm not related to this egg. It's not the dinosaur egg, said Kyle. They opened it anyway. It was Gladstone Gander inside. Ono went to look again and saw another egg under the volcano's lava flow. Hmm, I'll have to use my powers, said Kion, and off he went. At the volcano, Kion summoned up his powers to raise the lava flow a little. He hoped that it was enough to release the egg. Thomas backed up to the volcano and indeed the egg fell out. Off they went.
This must be the dinosaur egg, said Kion. But it wasn't. It was actually a Winnie the Pooh egg. Inside was Winnie the Pooh's friend, Rabbit. Ono reported back again. They have another egg in the dungeon and they're guarding it. That must be the dinosaur egg. We need a distraction, said Foolie. I've an idea. And off she went on Thomas. Thomas dropped Foolie off and then went to the other side of the volcano. Foolie made a noise in the bushes and Janjar went to investigate. With Janjar out of the way, Thomas steamed into the dungeon, took the egg and left really quickly. He picked Foolie up on the way. Good work, said Kyle. We now have the dinosaur egg and we can find out about our ancestors. They started to open it, but then it carried on opening itself. Inside was a human? What? We are descended from humans? said Kyle. Back at the volcano, <laughs> Janjar and Tom Moss were laughing. They knew the egg would get taken and put the human inside. We all know that humans are descended from animals, not the other way round. Thanks for watching our story, which features the lion guard Hyena's Hideout playset and includes Janjar. In the base, there's a lava flow which goes into the dungeon. If you press on the branch, a lever throws a boulder down the volcano and if you press a switch, the platform collapses. There's an old tree that you can put your favourite character on and they will spin down. The lava flow will also slide upwards, revealing a secret cave. Uh oh! It's Tom Moss, and he's looking to have some fun. Look what he's found, a fireworks truck. This could be trouble. He pushed it around and dropped a couple of fireworks, so that the hard-working trains like Thomas and Percy would run over them. Hmm, what's that sound? wondered Thomas. The truck was on the firework. Suddenly, his truck exploded. Oh, it was Tom Moss. Ugh, there's jam everywhere, he sulked. But it wasn't just his truck that had exploded. Oh no! My cheese! cried Percy. Oh, Tom! Thomas arrived. Look what Tom did to my truck! complained Thomas. He did that to my truck too! cried Percy. We need to prank him back! said Thomas. Percy agreed, so they came up with a plan. So later that day, Tom was wandering around looking for trains to prank, when a ghost appeared. 
Tom doesn't like ghosts. It was a ghost Percy. Tom expected some ghostly things to happen, but nothing did. Tom then realised that it was no ghost, it was just Percy, so he left. He didn't fall for it, the plan's working, thought Percy. Tom then ran into another ghost. Ghost Gordon. Again, nothing spooky happened, making Tom realise that Gordon wasn't actually a ghost. So he left. Hehe, <laughs> wait till he sees the next ghost, said Gordon. He then ran into Ghosty, whom Tom had never met before. Tom has a think. Percy wasn't a ghost, Gordon wasn't a ghost, so this just must be Thomas in disguise. He wasn't going to be fooled for a third time, so he charged towards the ghost, but went straight through him. This really scared Tom. Ghosty then made some strange things happen. The water tower turned on. Points started changing. And what spooked Tom the most was that the fireworks truck he'd used earlier was moving completely by itself. Tom ran away, but the fireworks truck was still chasing him. He ran back to his tunnel. Everyone gathered round Ghosty. Thanks Ghosty, said Thomas. No problem, he replied. It's good to finally prank Tom back, said Percy. So everyone was happy as their prank had worked. Thomas was having a good day. He went round the corner and... A dragon? A fire-breathing dragon! I must go and warn everyone, thought Thomas, and he steamed off very quickly. He met Gordon at Knapford Station. Gordon, there's a fire-breathing dragon in the old tunnel. Of course there isn't, said Gordon. Come and see, said Thomas. OK, said Gordon. I could do with a good laugh. And off they went. Go on then, said Thomas. Take a look. Gordon looked into the tunnel. Ha ha ha, said Gordon. Very funny, Thomas. Very funny. And off he went. Why wasn't Gordon scared, thought Thomas. And he had another look. Ah, I'm going to find James. James, there's a fire-breathing dragon in the old tunnel. I'm sure there isn't, said James, but let's go and see. Off they went. Go on then, James. Take a look. James moved forward. <laughs> Good one, Thomas, said James. You got me. 
very funny. And off he went. Not James as well, thought Thomas. And once again, he took a look. Edward will see the dragon, thought Thomas, and off he went again. Edward, there's a far-breathing dragon in the old tunnel. Uh, no, Thomas, I'm sure there isn't. But let's have a look anyway. Go on, said Thomas. Edward looked into the tunnel. Oh, very funny, Thomas, said Edward. A dragon? <laughs> very funny. Thomas looked again. He then found Flynn, the fire engine. Come on, Flynn. Please put the fire out in the tunnel said Thomas. Flynn took a look. <laughs> There's no fire, Thomas. And no dragon either. Thomas looked again. Then Billy came by. Billy, be careful, there's a fire-breathing dragon in that tunnel. Billy looked. There they are, he said, my missing animals. Billy loaded the animals into his truck, but before he went, a dragon came out of the tunnel. See, said Thomas, that was just the dragon on the truck they used at the New Year celebrations, said Billy, and being pushed by Tom Moss the prank engine. Tom Moss, said Thomas, after him. Uh -oh. Tom Moss realised he'd been seen. He cleverly switched tracks, leaving the dragon behind. Thomas and Billy steamed after him. Thomas found the dragon, but now couldn't see where he was going. Tom Moss realised he had escaped and went back to his own tunnel. Later that night in Tibma's sheds, the other engines were teasing Thomas. Never mind Thomas, said Gordon. It could have happened to anyone. But this time, it happened to me. Ah, sorry, I mean you. <laughs> Ooh said Thomas excitedly. Is there a clown on the Isle of Sodor? Maybe there's a carnival. I must tell Sir Topham Hat. <laughs> and Thomas steamed away to find Sir Topham Hat. Oh, hello, Thomas. What brings you here? I found a clown carriage. Is there a carnival here somewhere? Not that I know of, Thomas, but I'm sure we can quickly make one. So Thomas left the station to tell all of the other engines, who all started to find different items for the new carnival.
Meanwhile, the Joker was trying out his plan. Soda will be mine! Hmm, that's odd. There are fireworks over the Joker's factory. I hope he's not up to anything. Okay, Thomas and Percy, I have two important jobs for you today. Thomas, I need you to pick up some guests for the carnival. And Percy, I need you to collect the clown. Let's go! Soon, James found the two trucks of fireworks which the Joker had placed there. Oh, these will be so good for the carnival! So James took them. Oh, good idea James! Just be careful with them. Fireworks can be very dangerous if they catch on fire. Meanwhile, at the Bat Cave... Stop Thomas! I need your help. But Batman, I need to collect guests for the carnival. Hmm, I'm sorry Thomas, but I think it's a trap. I think the Joker is planning something evil. Oh no, now that you've mentioned it, I think he is too. I didn't find a clown carriage earlier. I found the Joker's carriage. We must go and save everyone. The Joker entered his clown carriage and let Percy pick him up and take him to the carnival. Now you are all doomed! <laughs> oh no, it's a trap! Thanks, Batman and Thomas. Once again, you have saved the Isle of Soap. Ah! Oh. Oh. A good dream, Thomas, said Gordon. No, said Thomas. It wasn't. Ah, Thomas said Sir Topham Hatt. Today, I'd like you to move all the cargo. But sir, that means using those troublesome trucks, said Thomas. Well, yes, of course it does. How else are you going to do it? Now off you go. Good luck, Thomas, shouted Percy. Don't let them boss you around, said James. Thomas left in a bad mood and immediately started bumping the trucks. He 
he actually started to enjoy it and bumped them harder and harder. trucks were not happy and had a meeting. They came up with a plan to get back at Thomas. Thomas then steamed around the corner and up the slope and right into a truck. He was now completely stuck. His wheels were going round, but he was going nowhere. The trucks lowered the track and then started bumping the truck that Thomas was in. The truck didn't mind, but Thomas found it very uncomfortable. Then one big bump and Thomas and his truck toppled over. The trucks all laughed. Digging Rig's chomper was called to sort out the mess. He quickly got to work. Eventually, Thomas was back on the track, with some trucks behind him. Thanks, Chompa, he said, and carried on. Later on, back at Tibner's Sheds, the other engines found it all quite funny. Sir Topham Hat wasn't happy though and told Thomas that tomorrow he would have to finish moving the cargo and that he would have to be good to the trucks. If you treat them well they will work hard for you, he said. Thomas didn't want to close his eyes that night just in case he saw... Thomas and Percy wanted to pull a prank on someone who should we get? asked Thomas. Well, here comes Mater, said Percy. Quick, get into position. So they sprung into action. Hey, Mater, cried Percy. Hello, Percy, said Mater. What can I do for you? Thomas has a present for you. He's been looking all over for you, lied Percy. A present? Oh, wow, what is it? Mater asked. Oh, I can't tell you that. It would ruin the surprise, said Percy. I'll see if I can find Thomas. Now don't go anywhere. And off he went. Thomas soon came round the corner. With Frank. Whoa, cried Mater. Look, Mater, I've caught Frank, lied Thomas. Frank then leapt off the truck. Uh-oh! Mater ran away, with Frank close behind. Ah! Ah! <laughs> oh, poor Mater, said Thomas. But that was funny though, said Percy. Mater soon lost Frank though. Phew! 
Oh, I should have known they didn't really have a present for me, sulked Mater. He then started coming up with a plan of his own. Later that day, Thomas was having a drink, when James arrived. Hey Thomas, have you heard the news? he asked. No, what? asked Thomas. You've been chosen by Sir Topham Hatt to pull the very important express coach today, lied James. All you have to do is approach Maithwaite from the west. Really? cried Thomas. That really made my day. And off he went. Mater then arrived. Did he believe you? he asked. Yes, he did, cried James. I'll go and tell Percy the exact same thing now. Thanks for helping James, said Mater. Well, I'd never miss a chance to prank Thomas and Percy, said James. So he went over to Percy. Well done, Percy. You've been chosen by Sir Topham Hatt to pull the very special coach today. All you have to do is approach Maithwaite from the east side. Really? Oh boy, cried Percy, and he rushed off. But what Mater had done was alter the coach, so that it had two hooks. So when Thomas and Percy reversed into it from different sides, they had no idea that the other one was there. So when they both tried to move, neither could. This is a really heavy coach, thought Thomas. Mater then arrived. Sorry Mater, no time to talk, I've got this coach to pull, said Thomas. Oh, well, it looks heavy, maybe a bit too heavy for an engine like you, said Mater. This annoyed Thomas, and gave him the strength to get going. Confusing Percy. <laughs> laughed Mater. Why am I going backwards, wondered Percy. What's going on? cried Percy. Thomas stopped. Percy, where are you? he asked. I'm behind you, we're both attached to this coach I think, he said. Oh no, it's about to get worse, cried Thomas, as James and Frank were rushing towards them. So Thomas reversed, and Percy sped forwards, with James and Frank just behind. <laughs> They soon got back to Mater. Ha ha, got you, cried Mater. Very good, said Percy. Nice one, Mater, said Thomas. Sorry about our prank earlier. Your one's much cleverer, though. Thanks, guys, said Mater. Shall we call for a truce? And they all agreed.
วะฮ่าอู้หูหูหูเอาSome villains have released some pet shop uglies who are causing so much mischief. We must catch them. Let's go! <laughs> Yes, we did it. Well done, pups. <laughs> <laughs> 